This meeting is being recorded. Hi everyone, I'm just going to give it a minute for people to connect and then we can kick off. So Martin, I will start as we did last time, okay? Sure. Okay, we, we can start. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Marie-Claire Puffett. I'm the Senior Manager for Marketing and Industry Programmes here at IB Europe. Um, and I'm delighted that you're all able to join us today for the first of our um, webinar series showcasing some of the very best campaigns of our 2022 Mix Awards Europe competition. So we'll be hosting a number of webinars over the next few weeks to highlight some of the campaigns that won gold in our awards uh, this year. Hopefully this will provide everyone with some insight into what a winning campaign looks like um, and inspire many of you for the 2023 competition. All sessions are being recorded and available to watch um, on demand again later on. Um, and we will also be taking some questions from the audience. So please do submit your questions for today's speaker in the um, Q&A box or the chat box. So today we will be diving deeper into the campaign that won gold in the in gaming category, um, a successful recruitment campaign in gaming from Herbert and Gameset. So I'm delighted to introduce you to uh, today's speakers. So Martin uh, Kaschbach, uh, who is Head of PR and Marketing at Urbid Group, and Anna Resner, who is Client Service Director at GameSet and LifeTube, who will take you through the campaign. So over to you, uh, Martin and Anna. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for having us today. And uh, my name is Anna Resner, and I work as a Client Service Director uh, at GameSet, as you already know. And um, during this meeting together with Martin, uh, we will present to you uh, the project that we started uh, last year, actually. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, we would like to show you our video case. And this video case will uh, show you somehow uh, the overview of uh, what we already uh, did. Uh, and then uh, Martin, We'll also draw you a picture of the industry uh, that will give you a little bit of a context uh, of um, all uh, that uh, happened. Mm -hmm. So we can go on. Airboot is one of the five largest construction groups on the Polish market. Staff shortages are one of the main constraints on the development of this sector. Despite intensifying competition, most companies are still using less innovative ways to build their image and recruit staff. Data shows that a large proportion of students and technical graduates play video games. This is why we decided to use gaming as a tool to reach this target group. We started the campaign by supporting the largest university esports league in Poland. We didn't want to limit ourselves to basic forms of promotion. We decided to propose an activity which will connect offline and online worlds. It is worth mentioning that Halakoshiki is a unique place in Poland's capital, Warsaw. The complex, built in 1906, was one of the first significant market halls in the city after revitalization by Airbud in 2016. Now it is a vibrant place with trendy pubs, boutiques, street food, and a venue for cultural events. We encourage students to help create a dedicated Airbud map in CSGO, modeled on Warsaw's Halakoshiki. For the grand final of the project, we organized a live tournament set in the facility. The whole event took place in a professional setting and had an attractive prize pool. The company's employees also participated. As a result of our campaign using this place in gaming, more than 700 candidates applied for an internship in Airbud. This means that more than 11 people competed for one internship post. This is a fourfold increase from 2020 when the number of applications was 180. The campaign also managed to gain a huge amount of traction on the internet. It was the first employer branded campaign on the Polish market based on the metaverse phenomenon. By translating Airbud's real life project into a map in the game, we made the brand function in the virtual world of gameplay and become a desirable first employer for students. So, hello, my name is Marcin Kaczak. I'm a director and head of PR of, and marketing in Airbus Group, the largest independent 
Polish construction uh, in, uh, company. And what is the problem, maybe problem, the challenge of uh, our industry? So it's underemployment. So we are actually after IT, the largest, we are the largest uh, industry inside salaries and and then underemployment. So this is the problem that it's a lack of new and potential employees. And uh, what is uh, crucial important in this case, I, I think that the whole construction industry is extremely important for the uh, whole economy. So it means that it generates almost 40% together with related industries, of course, of uh, gross domestic product and almost 20% of all employment in our country. And I guess that in different uh, other countries is uh, the similar situation. And what are our main problems? So the generation gap. Uh, so it means that uh, our staff is older and older, and there is a problem with uh, this vocational schools. So it means that it's a lack of this uh, kind of edu education in Poland. Huge number of projects because the uh, last two years are extremely hot time for us, and we had a lot of new projects. Of course, the pressure of wedges, but here it's also not only because of the pandemic and inflation right, like right now, but also in history, it was always the problem. and. You know, we felt pressed uh, and um, our and potential employees because uh, it's not an array of this potential candidates. So it was a huge uh, problem for our HR department. And of course, a baby bus, namely, uh, we have a problem to replace the uh, older um, our employees. So the internships for all of the companies in our industry is the best way uh, are, are the best way uh, to, to recruit. And what's happened in 2020, the pandemic began, the people, especially students, were locked in their homes, everybody, and then all of our traditional tools like job fairs, events, visit to construction site were cancelled or postponed. More students started, okay, we can be romantic and think that they will uh, listen to Mozart music and write poems, but <laughs> we are sure that a lot of our colleagues and especially students started to play video games. So we thought, in, together with our HR department and, and our board of directors, hmm, we should address our offer and to be there, to be there. So where? In e-gaming and in this world of our uh, potential candidates. Uh, what is most exciting aspects of our industry? Of course, our uh, projects, so our construction, like uh, this Halakoshiki uh, in the city center, or also the other different museums. Um, um, uh, swimming pools like you want the picture or so on and it's very attractive for potential candidates to have this uh, to have such a nice investments in their portfolio and then to be proud yes i have built the uh, this famous building in city center and then we have found to, we have looked for the connection between gaming and construction industry and we decided to call Anna Resma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, having this knowledge that um, um, the most exciting things in uh, construction industry uh, are actually projects and that we have to fill somehow this generation gap, uh, we uh, as a gaming, um, a gaming agency uh, had this job to find a proper context uh, for Airboot to occur in gaming, right? And uh, we were looking for the students, especially uh, the students uh, with uh, specific technical skills and interests. Uh, and we knew that these people were among gamers. Okay, we can go on. Uh, I think that, yeah, maybe we, we may missed uh, one, uh, one slide because uh, they are quite similar. And yeah, uh, this, is, this is the one. Uh, so we uh, needed to find these students and uh, we had to be where they already were, right? Uh, we find them in Counter-Strike Global Offensive uh, and uh, we used uh, the environment of this specific game to appear among these players we were looking for. Okay, and now we can go on and uh, we actually ask uh, ourselves uh, the question uh, why should we uh, occur in Counter-Strike? 
And the answer was um, because it's one of the most popular games in the world, obviously, but it's not only this. Gamers spend lots and lots of their time playing uh, and actually the game is all about structures, buildings and constructions on the map of course, except uh, shooting to each other. So it seems that it's a very uh, nice uh, environment to occur uh, for, uh, for Airbot. So uh, we could introduce Airbot to gamers uh, without pulling the students out of the game. And it was the most important actually uh, for the whole activation. And um, this context gave us uh, the most benefits, as you will see uh, on next slides. Okay, so we can go on. And um, we actually had to uh, answer also uh, this question, should we go for uh, our own um, gaming league or maybe a specific team or sponsoring uh, our own player? And actually, uh, because we uh, were looking for something that will uh, give us, that would give us uh, the scale, uh, we are looking for a link to students. So we decided to work with the biggest student link uh, league in CSGO um, and uh, League of Legends that is called uh, University Esports Edu. This is the part uh, of the European League, especially, uh, actually. So this one is sponsored by. Uh, Amazon in Europe and in the Polish edition, we were the uh, title sponsor. I think that uh, um, then it wasn't sponsored by uh, Amazon, but now it is. So uh, for us, the most important was to uh, to become to become a title sponsor that uh, gave us uh, the most uh, benefits uh, that we uh, should have as a sponsor. So the broadcast of the games of the league on Twitch included interviews with interns and uh, the whole uh, advertising. Uh, we had also links to the recruitment landing page that was shown in the chat. Uh, also, Airbut was uh, present on the league's social media and website. Um, and then uh, all this communication actually gave us uh, um, this context to announce a contest uh, to replicate Airbut's iconic project that is uh, Halakoszeki on the map in CSGO. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the purpose of this contest was uh, to uh, make people use technical skills that are similar um, to these used while designing any structure, uh, any building or environment uh, by constructors or architects. Uh, and this way, uh, we collected uh, some really well-designed maps that you will see on the previous, uh, not previous, but on next uh, slides. Uh, and uh, the, the winning project was um, uh, implemented uh, into the game by a professional map designer. So actually the purpose was to uh, design somehow of a concept of the, of the map, but the real map designer uh, then put uh, this project uh, yeah, created for the professional way yes exactly uh, Here, but this one is the mock-ups or this is the final no this is there the mock-ups yeah the... yes uh, these are real mm -hmm. uh, real uh, projects that we were uh, sent by uh, students uh, and we can now go on to uh, to see these projects you can see the first place here and it was uh, actually the nicest yeah one the second one and the third one also. Um, so you can see that these uh, designs were really nice and uh, they were really like, uh, you know, a lot of time spent, a lot of hours spent on, on designing this, uh, these projects by, by the students. Okay, but uh, the winning project was uh, replicated uh, on the map and this map was uh, actually, uh, the map that we um, used to uh, the third part of our, our our project, that was the tournament in CSGO, the tournament uh, also for the students uh, that took place online, but uh, the, the, the final part of uh, this um, tournament, uh, the great finale, uh, took place in the real Halakoszeki, and it was a real inceptual 
experience uh, that were uh, given to uh, to the people in Warsaw in the real Halakosheki that you uh, could uh, go into uh, Halakosheki and uh, play on a map of Hala uh, while sitting in real Hala. So uh, yeah, and um, I think this is the the main part uh, that uh, showed that this project was really uh, nice and was really interesting for uh, for uh, maybe not for but uh, to uh, show how uh, we could uh, play you know uh, between the real uh, structure and the real environment and this environment of the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we can see uh, now we can see uh, a short movie uh, that uh, in which we can hear uh, Aga and Stepan, game set project managers, uh, who are here uh, talking about the building, and then we can see the film about uh, the event uh, in Halakoshiki. Znajdujemy się w hali koszyki, ponieważ firma Airboot budowała tą halę i zdecydowała się także wejść w gaming. Myślę, że hala koszyki jest dobrym miejscem do zaadaptowania na cele mapy do Counter Strike. Jest tu wiele zakamarków, mamy też antresole, z której można spojrzeć na dół, także wydaje mi się, że ta hala faktycznie ma duży potencjał, jeśli chodzi o tę grę. Koncept mapy do gry może stworzyć jak najbardziej każdy. I właśnie 31 lipca tutaj w hali koszyki odbędą się finały turnieju 2 na 2 w grę Counter Strike Global Offensive. Nigdy, nigdy wcześniej się nie spotkałem, żeby firma budowlana wchodziła w, w ogóle w gaming albo w esport. Jest to dosyć innowacyjne podejście, ale myślę, że jak najbardziej słuszne. Antresole, z której można spojrzeć na dół, także wydaje mi się, że ta hala faktycznie ma duży potencjał, jeśli chodzi o tę grę. Koncept mapy do gry może stworzyć jak najbardziej każdy. I właśnie 31 lipca tutaj w hali koszyki odbędą się finały turnieju 2 na 2 w grę Counter Strike Global Offensive. Nigdy, nigdy wcześniej się nie spotkałem, żeby firma budowlana wchodziła w, w ogóle w gaming albo w esport. Jest to dosyć innowacyjne podejście, ale myślę, że jak najbardziej słuszne. Well, the whole movie is actually cut, and you can see uh, it on the YouTube. But uh, no, YouTube we are exactly. yeah to show you this uh, the specific part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, and let's go with this movie. Sorry for some technical problem. Sorry, but it's, I would like to try once again. <laughs> Something is going on. <laughs> Witam Was bardzo gorąco z tego wyjątkowego miejsca, hali koszyki. To miejsce będzie świadkiem wyjątkowego wydarzenia, finału w CSGO Walka o Koszyki. Airboot chce być firmą nowoczesną, chce być firmą, która doskonale rozumie nowe pokolenie. Genos, oj szybka wymiana, po drugiej stronie jest jeszcze Nio z Augiem. Wie gdzie jest jego rywal, z lewej strony, ale jednak Bienos świetnie ustawiony, a to daje wynik 8 do 7 po stronie atakującej. Wiele osób dzięki temu eventowi dowie się o firmie Airbus. I o tym na przykład ja się dowiedziałam dzisiaj, że Airbus miał bardzo dużo wspólnego z tą halą. Myślę, że jest to też bardzo fajne, żeby pokazać młodym ludziom, że takie firmy naprawdę top of the top wchodzą w esport. A esport robi się coraz bardziej popularny i Airbus może na tym tylko skorzystać. Kiedyś nie było sportu, kiedyś nie było social mediów. Firma funkcjonowała w innym otoczeniu, w innym środowisku. I gdybyśmy zostali w tym miejscu, po prostu byśmy zginęli. Nie pozyskalibyśmy nowych pracowników, nie pozyskalibyśmy zdolnych ludzi, 
którzy za chwilę e, rozpoczną u nas pracę i którzy będą mogli się rozwijać, będą mogli awansować, będą mogli spełniać swoje ambicje. Zapraszamy na wielki finał Walka o koszyki. W końcu najlepsi z najlepszych, czyli ekipa Health Machine Paralitycy. Ciężkie starcie, naprawdę ciężkie starcie. Żeby grać dobrze w CS-a, trzeba poświęcić temu całe życie, mnóstwo godzin. Ludzie nie zdają sobie z tego sprawy i gracze CS-owi uwielbiają oglądać mistrzów, uwielbiają oglądać ludzi, którzy grają w tę te, te grę po prostu doskonale. No i czy to zapewni zwycięstwo? Była szansa, ale nie wykorzystana. Delikatnie tak naprawdę poobijany Eski w cieniu z eliminacją, po drugiej stronie Eski. No i czy będzie ten celny strzał ze skauta? No właśnie, nawet jeżeli to byłoby to naprawdę ciężkie do zrealizowania, ale jednak 16 do 11. Wienus i Cieniu wygrywają walkę o koszyki. Oto oni, nasi mistrzowie, zwycięzcy turnieju walka o koszyki. Ogromne brawa, panowie, gratulacje. Czy jest już jakiś pomysł na to, co zrobicie z taką kasą? Nie mam żadnego pojęcia, czy możemy zrobić takim pieniędzmi. Nie spodziewaliśmy się, że wygramy. Such a nice memories. Okay, so we have already obtained some industry awards for uh, this campaign and we are really happy because uh, we put a lot of effort in, in this, but of course this cooperation was also very, very nice. Mm -hmm. And what next? Martin, maybe you will tell because you know <laughs> this is so the this first thing that is happening now. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, uh, actually it's done. But we had a small campaign esports. We write like airboats, so without the, without the dash, it's in one word. The second one was the uh, recruitment campaign in CS:GO as well. So the, we get the chance for our potential uh, interns to have an interview, job interview in CS:GO. So. The uh, candidates has, um, can um, choose, uh, they would like to have the interview in telephone, traditional way, online, per personal in our, uh, in our building, or also during playing in CSGO. But what's in the future? So I can only to, sh to, to share a little bit to the, that my dream is to have the whole collection of our Replic our construction, which will be replicated as the maps for CSGO in the future. So if potential candidates would like to visit our uh, our projects from the past, then can choose, okay, I would like to play oh, to get today in this shopping center, today in this office building. So this is my dream. And of course, together with Anna, we will probably, highly probably um, do it in the future. Yeah, we are actually working on uh, on the next map and on the next uh, construction in CSGO. So yeah, this is what we are doing now. Exactly. Thank you very much. It's very exciting. Um, I have a couple of questions for you, if that's okay. Um, so obviously using in-gaming ads to launch a campaign for recruitment um, might not be an obvious choice for many brands. What made you choose in gaming for this particular campaign? Um, and what do you think other brands might learn from, from that? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so maybe I, I can briefly answer if uh, Martin, you have anything sure. to add, or, of course, feel free. Uh, well, as Martin said, um, you know, on a recessive market, we actually simply have to look for solutions that students recognize are something to remember, something that is not obvious, right? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the construction industry actually may not be the sexiest one in communication. Uh, and we need to show that it really can be. Um, and I guess that um, we showed that gaming actually can be an interesting touch point for different target groups and even for the brands that does not fit in at first glance, uh, you only need to find a special contact as a brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, great. Martin, did you want to add anything to that? Mm, I guess that pandemic 
the pandemic actually uh, make a lot of different procedures better. It means that in the previous life, previous world, we can use some traditional tools like fairs, for example, of the personal meetings. And then during the pandemic, we need to change everything actually in our mindset. It means that we need to, to try new solutions. Yeah. And especially that our industry is extremely old fashioned, it's very traditional, I guess. And then uh, we have been looking for something new. And then I guess that we have today a huge success in this e-gaming campaign. Of course, I guess that also because we were the first, so we paved a lot of ways, I would like to say. So it's yeah. we were the first uh, company who which introduced some interesting solutions, like gaming, for example. Yeah, I think that's really interesting what you say about the pandemic and having to completely rethink how you exactly. how you recruit students into an industry, whether it's construction or, yes. or anything really. That's right, um, and especially that our industry hadn't been stopped during pandemic. Yeah. So I can understand that, okay, we need to cut the, all of the budgets and we don't need more. But you still needed to recruit. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We had the same uh, the same challenges in our company to, to, to attract new, new people, so. And, yeah. yeah. Cool. So what do you think, obviously you won gold in for the in-gaming uh, category of Mix Awards Europe 2022. What do you think was key to you getting that gold, gold <laughs> award? I really hope that it's not because we are not such an endemic industry. We are maybe a, an obvious industry, but I guess because it was, there was a good campaign, which works. So we have a lot of candidates for internship. The image of our, uh, our uh, brand uh, is stronger. We, we are more popular. And I guess I see it in all of the numbers, especially on social media and so on. So still it's uh, almost one year after this uh, huge event in Halakosuki but still I see that there is a difference for example when our HR business partners ask um, about the reasons why do you want to to go to Erbut to our work uh, sometimes the, 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 has the some, some questions what do you want to uh, to work in Erbut the answer is very often because you are so uh, modern you are so uh, mm. But there's a nice energy and you are not yeah. so traditional like uh, your competitors because yeah. you know the uh, salaries are all the same in our yeah. industry actually it's the, an the exci business part, exciting company exactly it's the same but it's also yeah. about how strong is your brand how good is your brand and uh, yeah. uh, what kind of association do you have with your brand I hope that not only because our uh, the name of our brand is with E like esports or Airbus like esports but also because our potential candidates, I'm sure that they are in this world. So th th this was the reason. Cool. Yeah. So uh, the campaign worked in terms of brand perception of of Urbud, which is ideally, you know, what you want to get out of any advertising. Um. So kind of final question then: what what can we expect from from the CS Go campaign? What's next? I think this is more to me <laughs> uh, as I represent a gaming uh, gaming agency. So, uh, well, you know, uh, a lot, of course, obviously. And this game is uh, very capacious in terms of uh, campaign ideas that you could see uh, actually everywhere. Uh, you could see it uh, in international brands communications, uh, for example, in KFCs looking for hidden codes on CS map activation or uh, different uh, examples of branded uh, maps. Uh, that are actually actually maybe not very specific for CS:GO because uh, on in different games uh, that are very popular uh, around the world you can uh, have a dedicated branded map okay but uh, in yeah. CS:GO this is uh, very specific because but uh, very specific specific uh, for example for uh, for construction uh, industry because you can uh, yeah. Uh, easily replicate something that um, that is represented in a real world. Um, you can actually simply put a branding on the map, gamers play. But actually, the real experience uh, is to look for some, you know, Easter eggs or to transfer some uh, spatial experience uh, from the real world to the game. Yeah. So, so what we did with uh, with Halakosheki, and. Um, we need to uh, remember also that gaming is not any niche anymore. 
it's one of the most important touch points for the brands, but it's also very challenging for, for the brands. Not anyone has any idea how to, you know, use gaming uh, to communicate. And um, yeah, so I think that the point is to look for a nice experience we can offer to players and uh, to build the specific context uh, that it, that can be appreciate, appreciated by uh, by the players to give some added value to the game, and then we can be sure that the players will be really happy to have this connection with the brand. Uh, this is of course some general points, but uh, uh, what I really want to say about CS:GO is that this is really uh, very uh, nice and easy, adaptive, uh, easily adaptive uh, environment to uh, to work uh, with a brand on uh, communication to the players. Yeah. Cool. So lots of exciting opportunities then, and I think to your point, Anna, as well, um, more education and, and probably case studies needed for in gaming to to showcase how it can how it can work for brands so you know you guys do taking the time to do this webinar you know should should help with that and and, uh, and we will continue to um to help brands so thank you very much both of you for your time um and for everyone for joining us today we will be making the recording available to watch on demand as well so if anyone wants to go back or share it with colleagues then you can do so um and we have the next webinar in our series coming up next, same time next Wednesday. So uh, yeah, do look out for that. And thank you very much, both of you, for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.